The boy looked down and saw that the floor was awash and the cauldron was overflowing. He commanded the broom to stop, yet the broom continued. Stop! I demand it! he shouted, but the broom ignored him. Stopping had never been part of the spell. Lemminkainen stood on the bank of a broad river. The northern lights danced above him and needle-sharp stars pierced the sky. Delicate frost clung to the rushes and reeds that grew there. It was so very cold in this land of the dead. Lemminkainen was waiting for the swan of Tuonela, sentinel of the river that divided this world from the next. Wings grew from the prince's shoulders, buzzing and whirring, and up, up he flew into the blue sky. He became smaller and smaller, and by the time he reached the ship, the little bumblebee prince was so small, no one noticed him. Deeper and darker they went, until at last the cave opened out into a vast underground cavern. It was filled with glittering eyes and muffled voices. Soon, Pear saw the cave was filled with trolls. The girl's father sat on a great chair and glared at Peer Gint. Well, look, we have a human here. All the other trolls shuffled forward to get a better look. Shall we eat him? they said. <laughs> How the Sultan loved these stories, strung like pearls on a silken thread, fragrant tales of roses and perfumes, kings and genie, of treasures and talismans, flying carpets and secret caves, of thieves and magic lamps, palaces and pomegranates. They came in a roar of anger, the Swiss peasants charging together down into the valley like a storm, taking the Austrians completely by surprise. Gessler ran for his castle, but there above him, on a rock, was William Tell. 